Hello and welcome to the Foundry Roundtable, the podcast exclusively covering the Foundry for Star Trek Online. I'm your team Foundry author, Jorgen1701, and uh, I'm sorry to report that negotiations with Godzilla and Mothra broke down, so they will not be appearing on the show tonight. Um, I just have to make do with my usual co-hosts, Green Dragoon and Duncan Idaho. I was going to say, we're not so bad. I mean, <laughs> Duncan has been accused of being a cat, and I've been accused of being an undine, so it's kind of the same. The, those accusations um, have not gone away. <laughs> yeah, at some point you just got to own it. Yeah. Just say, yes, I, I confess, I'm an undine. <laughs> Tonight, the part of Duncan uh, Idaho will be played by AEI Judge Cat. <laughs> It will be played by Duncan Idaho imitating his cat. Actually, my cat does make those types of noises. Not like, you know, in that tone, but. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, back to one, one, one of our regular shows. Um, tonight, I thought uh, I, I had seen some new uh, production stills from season two of discovery. And I thought, you know, we had started building um, a sort of discoveries inspired interior. Um, and we had gotten as far as creating a hallway, which looked pretty nice. You know, obviously we can't do things a hundred percent, but uh, it looks quite nice. Uh, you know, you could use it for a, a cross field interior or a, a Walker class interior or, or whatever else they might give us. So, um, we need some rooms, though, if we're going to keep going with this. So I thought that's what uh, we could work on tonight. So the question is, gentlemen, what rooms shall we build? Um, a bar. <laughs> it's a pantry <laughs> map. Well, you know, one, one of the I was looking for reference pictures, and one of the ones that I got was uh, the mess hall. Yeah. See, mess hall is something that they uh, certainly visited on the show. Yep. Um, let's see. We also got a sick bay, which I mean, we've got a bunch of things that we could sort of fold in from the um, the TOS um, palette that would be logically justifiable under the scenario. So, well, I'll, I'll tell you what all I found. I found the um, you know I was looking for reference pictures. I found obviously quite a few of sick bay, um, and I think that one would be quite doable. It's it's very detailed, but I think it'd be doable. Um, transporter room. Uh, you know, obviously the bridge, I thought we'd stay away from the bridge. Um, but uh, there was a nice little conference room, which was round and small. So, you know, small is good for us because we are we spent quite a lot of time at the asset limit <laughs> or, or quite a lot of assets on our corridor. Um, let's see, there's crew quarters, there's a shuttle bay, um, and the brig. Oh, and uh, engineer. Or yeah, spore engineering. I'm not. I, I, I was never quite clear if maybe the warp core was somewhere else on the ship. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like like that was the science lab. So, a bunch of engineering stuff in there, but mm, I so, think the warp core was probably elsewhere. If if we are to take TOS as reference, um, the warp core is not a vertical thing in TOS like it is in uh, later Star Trek. Um, so mm -hmm. you have that door in like the back of the room. That may well be the uh, the warp core. Because mm. you kind of have that triangle tunnel thing in yeah. TOS. I figure it may have been retrofitted as well, you know, with like the, the spore components. And, the, you know, this was regular old main engineering and they retrofitted it into spore engineering as well. That makes sense. I mean, it, it would seem make sense that it has to be close to the propulsion system. Does it, though? <laughs> it's a whole different uh, propulsion system. But it's I think it probably is, but, you know. Obviously, I was just grabbing these pictures off the web, so some of them are small. Yeah, I, did, I wanted to be able to scroll through them, so I didn't load them into OBS. <laughs> Sick beta was always interesting because it was very different color. We got a shot here where the doors are actually open. You can actually see inside mm. and it does kind of look reminiscent of the, uh, 
what we presume to be the warp core in TOS. They were never it does. very specific about those things. And as much as uh, people like to uh, or com complain about uh, how Discovery doesn't look very TOS, I think there's actually a lot of it that is very much drawing from TOS for its inspiration. Oh, yeah. It's just the, the stylization has been modernized. Um, and if I recall correctly, the, the Spore Garden was like just directly through a door off this room, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like through that door in this shot. I think you can I think you can side. even see that door off off on the right there, yeah. So are you saying we should tackle try and tackle uh engineering? Engineering, why not? We got a lot of fungus props too. We can put in the shrooms, man. Yeah, the shrooms. Okay. The great our... party deck. <laughs> Let me let me see if I can find even more pictures of engineering. Okay, I'm gonna quick load up these. Apologies, oh, folks, doing a little bit of uh, behind getting everything in, organized. So if you were, if you were building this into a map and you wanted a engineering for a crossbow class like we're going to build, you can have this corridor here. Um, build a little turbo lift or a door that looks like it could lead to a turbo lift at the other end. Spawn in the player over there, and then have them run down the corridor to engineering. Yeah, I mean obviously this is asset heavy, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so. I think I we were right at about 150 assets with this hallway. So yeah, like you probably want to just kind of put in engineering like right now, <laughs> like um, because yeah, that's probably going to be even more asset intense, <laughs> especially with the multiple tiers and this um, the stairway to the back section, plus all the detailing around the walls. That's going to be quite intense. So what I'd almost recommend here is that you sort of close up both in this hallway. You take out one of those uh, bar sections. So you take out a section of wall and then basically build engineering in basically coming off in basically a T-junction. Yeah, so you enter it in the middle, turn yeah, off the so middle of that hallway rather than one of yeah, the Yeah, you start, you start at one side of the hallway, you block off the other end of the hallway, and then the... Um, Actually, you know, the Voyager engineering was kind of like that, too. There was a, a hallway, and then there was a big door right in the middle of the hallway, and that led perpendicular to engineering. Yeah. Okay, so that, that kind of makes... Yeah, because that just gives you the sort of the longest hallway, but at the same time, the... the it, you just, when you go into that doorway, you still get the feeling of space on both sides. Mm-hmm. So we need to take out a section of this wall and build a door. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, this is actually two segments that we built and then we stuck together. So, uh, yeah, actually just, yeah, grab that and move it like so. And as always, remember to turn off out of our snap to grid. <laughs> As always, it's the thing that we forget. Uh, um, Cap Captain P. F. Dennis says he ha built a spore garden in the foundry, and he used sparkly gas effects with various foliage. And he's going to go get some screenshots. So this was practically tailor-made to be made in the foundry. We would just need, you know, a certain little guy. Plot around didn't, the spore garden. Didn't you just claim something about uh, having a way to build a tardigrade, or plan to? Build oh, a I, s I said I wanted to do it. It's I'm still. I still don't know how. <laughs> I mean, it's like you could do one curled up on its side, but you need like a series of small, like small rocks. So you give the impression that it's a tardigrade in hibernation. Um, or you kind of cover up one of the Undine um, crates that's a little bit more tardigrade-ish from the start. But still, it's like to have a live tardigrade. We, 
Uh, I'm still hoping that Cryptic eventually adds one as an NPC. Maybe even including a um, oh Renegade Zuret style mission where you play as a Tardigrade. <laughs> okay, so I've got a. May have to move our floor and ceiling around just a little bit because I have a picture of the entrance to engineering from the inside, uh, which is up on a little Skype. bit of a platform. I'm going to do that in just a moment. There it is. You can see the door to the corridor with people coming through it, and then they come down to some stairs onto the floor, which is, it's a mirror image of the other side with the warp core behind the windows. Okay, here's the image. Um, well, that actually kind of makes things easier, because then we only have to build half the thing, and then we can Copy paste. that side of it, yeah. You know, it occurs to me we do have like the TOS warp core assets that you could put behind the windows when we get around to that side of it. Find a way to make them glow really red. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have the sunburst pro uh, prop that you can maybe try to put it a long distance. Yeah, put it behind the wall. Yeah, I mean, you have to get it a ways out because otherwise it's just going to flood the entire room. Yeah. Even behind definitely worth playing around with. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too. Oh, you know what? Oh, easier one. I'm using this right now. Uh, Klingon wall props. So you sink them down. So they've got these um, these uh, vertical uh, rectangular um, panels that just glow orange. You line those up, sink them down. So you're only basically looking at essentially a tunnel of those and then put those around the um, warp core. Then you definitely get a um, nice red glow, but something that's a little easier to control. Or you can just basically straight up use. Uh, and I, f I found an image that's just for you, Duncan. Very great. And with a hat. Very great with a hat. Come on, upload. All right. Why is it not uploading? There you go. <laughs> uh, yep. Had had we just had we just a, a, a little tinge of Dune inspiration behind the whole spore drive thing. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, it's just it's just spice. Spores are just spice, but with more techno babble. Yeah. It's like, oh, we can't have a biological unit controlling where our spaceships go. Are you sure? <laughs> Gotta been here before. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I, everything is inspired by everything that comes before, whether people realize it or admit to it. Not Emperor Stamets. Watch for it in season two. Okay. What you'd want to probably do, though, is move the floor that we have now for the corridor. So the very edge of it is at the edge, is right under the walls. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. So that way you can. Steps. So that way you can do some steps down. I'm gonna have to do that with the ceiling too, anyway. So. Yeah, ceiling's probably a little higher. Just kind of building in the space obviously, in between these. Uh, obviously, the scale is not correct or anything. Well, I mean, with the builds like this, you kind of we, just got to go we, for the we gist. Do as close as we can. 
um, it was funny. So I, I, my baseball stadium got a little play on 10 forward weekly this week. Um, and then I think taco was saying that's yeah, probably not to scale. And, and technically it isn't because I used, you know, the, the interior of the baseball diamond is a hundred feet. So it's probably like 110 between the bases instead of 90 feet. So it is a little bigger than actual baseball diamond scale, but, uh, well, according to, you know, current baseball enough. rules. Yes. Maybe, maybe they changed it in the future. It's 110 feet between the bases. Well, if it yeah. makes you feel any better, mine's probably under sized. Yeah. Still should put that together and submit it for a spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it needs a spotlight, but still. Oh, I mean, it would be a, kind of a next uh, next um, social map. Really give it okay, a Captain BF Dennis uh, sent me a picture of his spore garden that he created. Which looks very nice. Do, 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 do. Oh, we should probably talk about the um, next challenge. Mm -hmm. So we did discover today that we don't have any ga foundry doors currently live for the Gamma Quadrant. Cryptic was working on it, but Apparently, it didn't go through, so we may need to adjust plans until we hear from Cryptic about, you know, <laughs> if it could be, say, added soon. Um, obviously, that would be the ideal thing, because, I mean, I mean, the ideal thing for this challenge would be, like, make a mission in the Gamma Quadrant. Yeah. So, we would just need dead foundry doors for the Gamma Quadrant, that would be all good. <laughs> um let's see what was it uh primar 13 was um looking at doors uh specifically on deep space nine and found all kinds of them um apparently they 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 weren't like exact um i don't know how to say this exactly they, they weren't linked to the old doors so i think if you if you set a mission to start at a door on ds9 before you're gonna have to reset that door yeah, because it still technically exists in the game because players who log in on that map did have the... Well, at least for the time being, it's currently live. Because for older characters, you may notice that if you log in and you haven't logged in in a while and you parked yourself at the Deep Space Nine, you may be initially at Deep Space Nine, then beam out or automatically transferred. I'm not sure where it is now, but yeah, old DS9 was in the game after um, Victory is Life. Well, it's kind of like Memory Alpha, where it's removed, but yeah. the, the files are all still there. Yeah, so they didn't do, like, the one-to-one -one changeover, kind of like they did for um, Ryza. Where you've got the old foundry doors, and the, they correspond one-to-one -to, -one to new foundry doors on the new map. So, the, um, so, yeah, that's just definitely the thing to go back and change, if you have any missions that start on uh, Deep Space Nine. So, which I, I do. See. The, so this I is the outside of mess with that. my hall. It's a good thing to do right now, in fact. Not sure what I'm going to do about these. Maybe I can change them into walls instead of platforms. Because they're essentially only there for this little bit of detail. Mm -hmm. Or or just move them so that the edge is right above the door. Or, or right above the wall on this side. So you just slide them over a bit well yeah but then they're going to stick into the uh hallway where they're not supposed to because here's the edge right here inside the hallway and then here's them sticking out yeah but i think i think if you just moved them i'm talking about the horizontal the platforms left. not the vertical walls yeah and that's what i'm talking about as well you just Take take that horizontal platform and slide it till this outer edge is right above the wall. Well, you're going to see it because it's right here. It's going to cover up the ceiling. Yeah. Um, I guess if we turn it into a... I, I, 
I see what you're saying now because I didn't realize that that wall only stuck out that much. Yeah, why don't yeah. you use uh, vertical walls for that? That's sunk down because yeah, because you're just using the small little edge. It's not the whole flat space. So yeah, if you're just using more building block walls, you should be able to satisfy the same um, that same little edge detail. Mm. Yeah, sorry, I thought that flat platform was you know, something that extended all the way across the other side of the corridor. But I see what it is now. I feel like a lot of this episode is going to have spent me just trying to remember how in the world I built this originally. <laughs> Which is valuable. Uh, let's see. What was my mission that started at Deep Space Nine? It was called Somewhere in Time. So yeah, once we get all the uh, detail sorted out, then we should probably you know start that next challenge. <laughs> so what what do you guys think? Um, you know, we were talking about this a little bit um, before the show. Now, what you could do is something like you know make a mission that follows up on an episode of deep space nine yeah i mean that's that could work it's a little specific though because well if yeah, it's an you, episode you like it's a couple a, of hundred episodes to choose from yeah it's a couple hundred episodes a bunch of character points so uh, let's see or it's the, oh, it's the question is what what would you do since we don't have gamma quadrant do doors we, yeah do we need to make it so specific as episode of Deep Space Nine or episode of Deep Space Nine or STO? Because I'm just thinking that some people may want to have a go at um, following up um, in-universe stuff um, as well as out-of-universe. So maybe doing a little bit more with um, Cardassia mm -hmm. as it is now. Uh, you so know, we, we, could, we could just do a Cardassian focused one specifically, you know, yeah. make a mission about Cardassians or for Cardassian players. Yeah. I like the Cardassian player one, or at the very least something that can involve a Cardassian captain. That might be a little vague. So like can involve this in, well, it technically doesn't say, no, you can't be a Cardassian. Um, like the way I'd, I like, I'd ideally approach that is to make it really Cardassian focused but include optional dialogue for non Cardassian players, just so those who don't bind to the C store don't feel like they're excluded from playing the um, series. Mm -hmm. You could make a Cardassian yeah, make... without buying it. Yeah, I mean, we've always been able to do that. Well, through the yeah, the, but that's still kind of a that's still a pretty big buy-in to make a new character just to play one specific Foundry analogy. True. So yeah, I think primarily for Cardassians, but may, but also other players if you so choose. But the emphasis on being for Cardassians. Or Jem'Hadar too. Maybe give that as the sort of... Well, that might be a little bit more inclusive. Make a mission set in the Alpha or Beta Quadrant or Delta Quadrant um, for Jem'Hadar or Cardassian characters. Because that also gives a little bit more variety, too. If we want to call it something, it's like the Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to the Alliance um, challenge. Yeah, there you go. Because then, you know, we could get that started. Cryptic could, you know, with time, get us those uh, Gamma Quadrant doors. Okay, I mean, that totally works. Can't even tell one side from the other. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yeah, we got all the Cardassian ships. Card yeah, I mean, between having all the Cardassian ships and Gem and our ships, it's like those would be nice to well, use. Yeah, we might yeah, might we as well do something that you know encourages people to utilize those. Yeah, and we have those in the Foundry too, mm -hmm. and we've got Cardassians. The only thing is, we don't have we've the got a couple. Ship. We've got a couple Cardassian maps, don't we? Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. From from old old style stuff. Yeah, the old style stuff we've got. We've got buildings for and a bunch of different props for people who want to build custom new maps. Um, for example, just their own grant, like their own version of Cardassia Prime. Um, and then the uh, 
Yeah, the only thing we don't have is custom gem Hadar, but we do have plenty of default NPCs. So from a storytelling perspective, basically, like someone like me would be the only person who would kind of struggle with that one. Um, if I wanted to create like my own gem Hadar character doing stuff. But otherwise, I think for most authors, they wouldn't have a problem with that. And even if someone like me was doing this, I would just pick a different storyline. And there's plenty to choose from across all possibilities. Yes. As I'm doing right now. <laughs> so, so I think I think maybe we have kind of our, our rough idea here of what the challenge could be. is make a mission for Cardassian or Gempadar players. Okay. I'll bother Kale about it. Yes. And there's a certain amount of it that yeah. since, since we, it since should we do be have, a challenge. We have a very large influx of those characters. Um, and, and I think it's vague enough. I mean, you, you can, gosh, you can do just about anything with that premise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and at the same time, it is limiting, too, because it does, it's not limiting in the sense that it's a narrow challenge topic, but at the same time, there is a topic there. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, there's also two different approaches that you can take to, um, you know, if you were going to choose to make a mission for Cardassian players, you could either choose to do what basically Cryptic has said, which is these are officers who have joined the KDF and Starfleet, or you, you can could do them. give them for people who RP them as being in the Cardassian Defense Force. Yeah. Or whatever, or whatever they call that. I think it's the Defense Force. I was looking up on, um, they, like, they restructured their military, and I think that's as much as um, the path to 2409 says about, like, the current structure of the Cardassian military. They've got their own uniforms, and that's as much as we can really say. We ever actually seen those uniforms in game? Uh, the current ones, the okay. ones that, they, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, like there there have been some Cardassians just hanging around, um, during some of the background shots, like during the Iconian War, and it was just a standard Cardassian uniform. Okay, they did. So it's not really a no. new uniform. No, the Cardassians do not have a new uniform um, associated with their uh, current political situation. They look like Cardassians. Do 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 there, there were there were two probably interesting production stills that um, they put up for season two of Discovery. One is uh, Burnham entering a uh, some crew quarters that I, I guess the number references uh, Spock's quarters on the Enterprise. So are we going to meet Spock, or is maybe he's just not there? <laughs> I, he's away. I'll be honest. I mean, it would be like. Difficult to avoid him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and the, the other one, of course, was a, a new design for the Saurians. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I did see I that, like one. that one. Which is, it, it's, um, you know, it certainly references the old design, which, I mean, the old design was what? One of those things that was seen for like half a second. Yeah, the uh, background shot of motion picture. Hey, can yeah. You, can you send me links to those? Uh, I certainly can. Or to the webpage? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, those are all, you know, pretty, those are pretty nifty. Um, I did like that a little bit more than the, um, the redesigns of the um, Telrites and the Andorians, which I just felt like it just made them spike here. <laughs> this was like, <laughs> it's it kind of felt a little bit more, um, oh, holistic well, with how they well, approach the redesign. One thing that they've been doing, um, I think very well on Discovery is making the aliens more alien. Yeah, yeah. I trying like to get away aspect. from the the mm-hmm. people with four, things glued to their foreheads. Yeah, I, I, mean, like, I mean, I think the, I think the Klingons are more alien, and it's not just the makeup; it, it's also how they're presented and how they act. Yeah. The Klingons are scarier and more alien. Yeah, and I, which I think is cool. Yeah, that's an aspect I really like. Um, 
And yeah, of course you've got <laughs> a certain little, certain little little bugger who shows up on the ship. Who shall remain nameless? Oh. Because he's mentioned it basically every single show. <laughs> well, hey, you know, episode I, I'm of glad, Roundtable. I'm glad that you found something that um, was that interesting to you. And, and became, like, your favorite thing ever? <laughs> well, it's it's such a good running joke, and he's actually, like, if I could actually get him in the Foundry, he would actually make for a pretty good character. Because it's sort of that, like, Data-style character of someone who's sort of approaching... Oh, a, like, it's just non-humanoid to humanoid. But from a different route. Mm -hmm. And there's a language barrier, and there's so much you could actually do in terms of, like... Is there more of an ecosystem that tardigrades come from? So that's the thing. It's just, it's a really good, like, I want to actually incorporate a character, if not a tardigrade, then like a tardigrade into Starfleet security moving forward. But it's sort of like, it's, just I'm gotta stuck do, because. to do it, Nanoff. <laughs> Nanoff, I've tried, but I kind of make them ornery jerks. I mean, that's kind of where I like to go for Nanoff because. It's sort of like overcompensating for their physical deficiencies, and that becomes more of the joke. So it's funnier to, for me. It's more entertaining and compelling to write a nan off as having a humanoid personality, but in a completely non-humanoid body, which subverts expectations and also says something more basic about intelligence. The tardigrade is just altogether alien, but has some analogous characteristics where he interacts in the humanoid environment, and. He's also adorable, and you can make lots of hat jokes. So good compliment to Jigoro, because it's like, Jigoro and Tardigrade come up with a plan. You know it's going to be horrible, but somehow they're going to pull it off. Uh, so Bloodleaf Flau is uh, saying he was thinking of including a sort of throne room slash command area for a Cardassian base. Um... One thing to do if you're building a Cardassian base, I mean, we have some Cardassian walls, but if you kind of want to make it interesting or, or slightly different from that, um, use the uh, Cardassian buildings as walls. Because they're just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very tall, so if you wanted to build a, a, you know something that had kind of a throne room feel to it, um, a high ceiling is good for that sort of thing. And then you can build up like a platform up where where the big chair is. Mm. And where the whoever whoever's sitting in it can look down on the people that are coming to them. Yeah, there's definitely like hierarchy to Cardassian culture. At least in the more traditional sense. <laughs> this depends on how you want to portray them as well. I mean, the sort of actual Cardassian government of the Stowe era is probably more democratic. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, Garrick, to a point, I think. I think I there's mean, some... not going to shake all of that stuff in just thirty-six years or whatever it's been. Yeah, I think Eric's been a sort of a good gauge for current um, Cardassian politics where they're definitely not non Cardassian yet, but at the same time they are, they are not to God. So it's, there's been evolution, but at the same time there is still, you know, recognizable uh, cultural tendencies. Yeah. They're, the they're not as, maneuvering. they're not quite as Machiavellian as they used to be. You know, yeah, I mean the the Obsidian Order is gone, as far as I know. Yeah, I'm just uh, kind of thinking of like an uh, an analogous way to put it. It's like they're not the Republic. The Republic is completely different from, from the Ramon Star Empire. Yes, maybe you could say the Cardassians aren't as far far away from what that is, but at the same time, much more sociable. So yeah, basically Garrick. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, Garrick as influenced by his time on Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Or Garrick is just being representative of a larger shift in culture. 
mm-hmm. where he's just an example and there I, are I more feel, people I feel like, like he him. would be leading it. Yeah. Rather than the rather than just an example. Well, yeah, but what I'm th- what I'm saying here is that the um there may be more people who are very like Garrick who are therefore amenable to be led by Garrick or mm-hmm. support him and work with him because they have complementary interests. Sure. So it occur I mean you remember um Chain of Command when uh mm-hmm. Picard is being interrogated, was it Gul Madrid or one of those? And yeah. uh Gul Madrid talks a lot about Cardassians. And one of the things he mentions is that Cardassians used to be much more of a um deeper spiritual people. In many ways I kind of almost see them see the and this is kind of my interpretation um, that they may have been more Bajoran like in their past. And then there was, they were hit by a lot of uh, do, doesn't famines. Doesn't somebody say that what, exactly? Almost. I'm in, not in sure if, if, if they did, I can't recall where. Um, but in any case, uh, Bloodleaf says um, his idea is, this is a true way, a true way renegade who has, uh, set himself up as a god on a pre-warp planet. Um, and this is a, a place where they worship him. So you, you could either, you, you could do that either of two ways. You could say that, you know, the people built this using their own designs um, and materials from their own planet, or he told them how to build it, and so it looks Cardassian. Yeah, it's to his aesthetic sensibilities. Yeah. And that could be another indication of, you know, this guy's dominance over these people. I feel like I'm going to have to build some stairs. Ah, stairs. The the true enemy of the Foundry author. (laughs) Well, actually, the what's so stairs by themselves inset. Not so bad. A stair um, walkway that... Oh, what's the best way to put it? That so isn't what we have in this built is in a solid structure. Sort of it, like a catwalk stairs? Yeah, almost? catwalk stairs. That's the enemy of the foundry. And, and very steep? Yes. Like, we just... The, those spiral stairs on Deep Space Nine, they go up. Those would be really nice... <laughs> <laughs> it would solve so many problems. Well, shelf units could do it. You just stack those up in the same fashion, but still getting that nice, consistent, like, oh, basically, you, there are a couple of angled support pieces you could use for basically like railings, but those are quite steep. Uh, Captain B. F. Dennis says set them 0.3 each apart. Yeah, that. that's kind of that's yeah. what I use. Yeah, that's my default, too. Because that, that way you can actually walk up them. Yeah. Point two also works if you want a shallower incline. I think point four is pushing it. shelving we're, we're is going to be what I need. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to test see how this is coming together. Because you have the... You have on each side, you have them kind of like insert and then the, uh, or inset and then the uh, stairs come down the middle. Show the pictures there. Yeah, the, the platform that's on the level where you first enter sticks out a bit on each side of the stairs. Yeah. Which I see you've done. That's kind of what I'm trying to build. I mean, yeah, I mean, shelving unit definitely. But it will be nice once you got this side of it done. You can basically just mirror it and copy and paste the other side. That's a plan. At this point, I'm not sure that I'm going to try and put in like the whole uh, spore tank and uh, stuff like that. I might say this oh, is. Spore... A... Oh, you got to do the spore tank. Yeah, spore tank. Um, you can do that you last. Use... Yeah, what you could do is just um, wrote, like use that the larger aquarium, and you want to be able to set it apart and like as it's standing out, but what we could basically do is just set that into the wall. So you're only seeing that one empty side. Well, I'd say you need to work on your Y values. Obviously, but I'm, 
<laughs> I'm getting there, and I'm the, seeing it how far. I think the shape the shape works though. Yeah, actually, for the size of the room here, you could use just the uh, standalone, um, or actually, no, ca one single captivity device. Because yeah, that would fill up the space appropriately. You could. And then let's see which one would be best. The aquarium might work, um, but yeah, the captivity device um, 04 is, yeah, that one, yeah, that one I think would just work. <laughs> I mean, because it, it's sort of like, it's almost like the same principle. It's got a lot of data around it, and then it's like, well, they just updated the design a little bit. Okay. Well, I was going to give... I was just kind of going on the premise that this is a uh, not specifically discovery. And so uh, it may not have had the spore modifications. Oh, but every cross field that we've got in the game has the spore drive. Mine has like a... Exactly what I was thinking. Non, a poorly functioning spore drive. <laughs> <laughs> That's short one tardigrade. Honestly, I mean, I think they established that they could do short jumps without... A they did. any sort of a pilot. Yeah. pilot. It's it's the scale of the jumps that requires the uh, the pilot. Yeah, and, and if you can, want, can go long distance without a guild navigator. Yeah, and then if you want something that is very tardigrade like but isn't a tardigrade, it's yeah, console Undino O three. It's a relative of the tardigrade. I can't make it dance. I'll be amazed Johnny if I build says, this entire uh, thing in tonight. Johnny says if he if he was to do a disco era mission, what he would do is um, not have it do anything with spores, just have some of their plot, which is what I would do too. I, I, the, the one I was kind of thinking of is like, you know, what what was first contact with the Cardassians like? Maybe, maybe it happened during this era. And maybe it was uh, a complete shambles. <laughs> I mean, did it happen during Discovery's era? I want well, to say no, it was... we, we, don't, we don't know when it happened. In, in the Kelvin timeline, they seem to know what Cardassians are because... Uh, Hura orders a Cardassian drink at the bar. Okay, that's getting pretty close. Okay, so here's a question for everybody. What is... The Cation homeworld like? Uh, I always imagine it was pretty nice. Yeah. Um, I would go um, Savannah like mm -hmm. for a lot of it. Yeah. But. Plains. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of water because cats hate water. Well, it kind of makes like the cats are a little bit more, or most cats are a little bit more of an errant species. And you can kind of think of a bipedal um, humanoid cat developing in sort of a um, forested environment, shifting to um, grassland. is very similar to uh, humans. Because you get a little bit more of the um, grasping capabilities, and then you get the long-running capabilities, and it just kind of fits pretty They're well with their... They're a very uh, peaceful uh, race, aren't they? With kind of like a heavy focus on science. Yeah, but you've also got Farah, uh, Farasins who are very closely aligned to them. I mean, since you had their original humanoid evolution, so you can kind of imagine that they didn't necessarily start on their current evolutionary line perfectly in keeping with where their current philosophy is. So I'm thinking, like, you know, if, if I were to make a baseball stadium for the Cation team that we have uniforms for, I need a base map. Okay, I'm kind of liking that placement. Obviously, I've got one i got to fix, but... Yeah, um, um, let's see. In, in lieu of actual railings. Yeah, well. well, we work with what we got. Uh, something like that. 
What about tropical? I mean, just for the lo- like the location of the stadium, just to set it apart. So I'm just thinking it was because uh, you know, as far as the base map goes, um, basically I just need a little bit of it to that you can kind of see over the walls of the stadium. Yeah. So there, for a lot of just miscellaneous rocks, there's. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm actually thinking about meadow clearing because you could you. If I put it down where the clearing is, you could see the hills. Yeah. Uh, you know, meta clearing is the boring map that we all use, but still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've built a map. <laughs> um, let's see. There was also the, the one I was thinking about, if you wanted to do something that wasn't necessarily representative of their entire global biome, but regardless, is you've just sort of set it up as like, here's a tropical location, a tropical location. Actually, Meadow Hills, if you want to give yourself a challenge, like build it out over the water a little bit, and then you see behind it, like, yeah, so part of the stadium is actually built out over the water. And that, so you have a little bit of a view of that, but then you've also got the hills behind you. I mean, if you want to do something a little bit a little bit different, but um, I think Moore's Clearing might be interesting. Uh, where? Let's see. Thinking, is it Moore's Hills? No. No, no, those are going to be a little bit awkward. Um, it's Oasis Clearing that I was thinking about. Like, if you want to give them a little bit of a tropical vibe for where they built the stadium. Oasis Clearing. Because it's basically the same setup as... Um, yeah. yeah. That could be another one. Though. Now, let's see. Let's try that. Yeah, there's one map in particular I'm trying to find. Is it's one I keep coming back to, but I've never finished a project on it. Um, it might be Morse, because there's one of them that has some pretty nice elevation changes. By the yeah. way, if you're curious, my baseball stadium is 202 assets. Okay, yeah. Moore's Plains was the one I was um, dabbling with. You could sort of build it over the archways, so then you've got the hills on a few sides that show up. I don't know, though. That seems it's a little bit more rugged. So that might be more in keeping with um, a Telluride stadium. So for the superstructure, I'm thinking... Of the room, I'm thinking of using uh, these Klingon pillars. Ooh, yeah. I like that. I mean, you kind of have these whole... Because uh... there's there's a curviness I just can't replicate to it. Um... Yeah, it's that, that angle that brings it up and over. Um, and, and we don't have access to a lot of assets like that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Bring it down just a little bit, but um, that other one that you had on there, the bigger one, that that could almost be the angle you'd need for the the little pillars that are in sick bay. So it might be too big. Yeah, sick bay is, in Discovery is not a huge room. No, it's it's quite small. Actually, neither, neither is engineering when you really think about it. Compared to sick bay, it's a pretty big room. <laughs> yeah. It's not right. Feeling like I might need to get another ceiling established in here.
Okay, yeah, definitely um, the... Which one is this? Uh, Oasis Clearing looks excellent. You can see palm trees and, yeah. Um, I, I think as far as cations go, uh, you, you don't necessarily need to follow cat stereotypes. Um, you know, only for the joke. Yeah. But, but for, if, you, if you're doing something, re if you're trying to be real about it, <laughs> you don't necessarily have to. Yeah, they've got a lot of planet and they've had lots of time for evolution. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the Oasis clearing looks very good because if I set it real low or, or around the clearing, it, um, you can see palm trees and some hills in the background. It looks good. Now to try and like kind of customize it a little. Yeah. I'm still working on, uh, <laughs> what someone's called. Oh, um, it was duck on a uh, Twitter. Uh, it's like Kale's party pad or something like that. Because <laughs> yeah, it's just a custom map for Ganalda Station because we don't have that in the foundry, and I just as well build a new map for it. <laughs> yeah, working with the Klingon assets, so it's like I've got a lot of crates. <laughs> yeah, how can I be artful about crates? Crates and barrels. Got my training floor set up. Done. Got some statues set up in the offices. Good. Got some braziers, so I can... Um, or braziers. Not the other yeah, ones. Yeah, I was going to say... Um... <laughs> <laughs> braziers. There we go. Emphasis on the wrong syllable. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I've got large burn... I'm burning... <laughs> it would both work. <laughs> Burning bras, huh? Uh, they're lighting the map pretty well. <laughs> uh, now you got to work I, that into the joke that a character that just keeps saying braziers. Uh, I, I don't know if that joke works in text as well as it does in spoken language. No, I couldn't know. You just misspell it and see if anyone cat like see if anyone catches on through optional dialogue. Yeah. Anyway, though, um, got flaming things that are set into the walls, and that works out pretty well. Or generator pieces, that works out pretty well. And then some ceiling detail, but... Uh, yeah, I don't like building with Klingon pieces. It's sort of this really weird mix between austerity and the opposite of austerity. It's like, we're going to be austere unless it comes to a statue or our own culture, and then we'll be incredibly ceremonial about it. So you kind of want to build them gothic, but at the same time, they don't fill it with anything. There's no benches. <laughs> uh, well, it's a good Benches contrast. are for the weak. We got spiky bits. The weak yeah, will perish. Yeah, I mean, if we get Klingon stuff from Discovery in the Foundry someday, that would be a really interesting comp to pair that up, so long as the color palettes are relatively on par, like, relatively close to each other. So basically orange and brown. But yeah, then you could do some really interesting things mixing up those two styles. It's just, yeah, there's just not a whole lot we've got right now that really, that really does it. Because it's, yeah, it's that like, well, you know, you look inside and it's basically, we, we, we've we built a space shed. But then you look on the exterior of the buildings, even the ones in Star Trek Online, it's like, we need more flanges. Saving all, <laughs> we're saving all the materials on benches for things to bolt onto our buildings. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Also, I do like the the fact that the uh, Klingon boxes do have like a this way up arrow. They all blink in unison. Uh, 
So, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, just more stuff on Legacy Alpha. I'm working through. Let's see. Do we really want that? Eh. As, as per usual, now that I, I'm, I'm going back to this build, I find things that I messed up before. It's never going to be perfect. But it doesn't need to be perfect. Does it? Everyone will notice if I don't line this crate up in an <laughs> organic way. Especially Duncan. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the things you that does actually help with uh, space feel more organic isn't to line everything up. You just make a little bit of a haphazard feel to the, um, the placement of the objects, like they've been scattered about through sort of daily activity. And it does help. <laughs> like, instead of just a regimented, like, if you have a regimented series of boxes, it looks like they've been well organized. And if you contrast that on the other side of the room with something that doesn't look like that, you hee. Now you've got something. Suggested a function. Yay. So you, did you guys happen to tune into the uh, last Legion of Myth stream? I did not I did get not. a chance. I'm afraid. They played called Blue Space Part 3. Did that make them cry? One part did. One part did. Um, was, this, was this that shortest map ever that you... Uh... The shortest map ever. And <laughs> again, it's to, it's to sort of to fill everyone in. Cold Blue Space, made by Galvatron and ICU... Um, he really tries. Um, it's just that I think he's a kid, so it really kind of feels like that, like that combination of mashing action figures together, and that's the mission. But yeah, this was the literal shortest map ever, where it is just you go down, have dialogue on a map that was already something that you didn't ha need because you could have put it in a um, pop-up dialogue on a space map. Then you go to the space map, and it is just go to next map. Nothing else. Just go to next map. No special text. Go to next map. And yeah, that I, I fell out of my chair, and um, because you also weren't seeing it coming too, because it was bit like the narrative facing was building up to something, so it was like it was a. It was like a good punchline where there was flow, there was story, there was dialogue, and then all of a sudden, bam. So it's brilliant if this was like a parody mission because it's exactly the opposite of what you would expect. <laughs> so, I mean, it was just a great scene. So I recommend to people to check that one out um, uh, just because it was it, Legion of Myths big. You know, here's, you know, the big giveaway... They played through a couple special missions. They did Admiral Bobo Goes to War for the second one. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's Ethan Dog's favorite now because he loves the dialogue. In fairness, that was intended as a comedy. Yeah. Even and if they it did was also really intended good... as a grinder. <laughs> yeah. It, well, it's... yeah, obviously, you know, more thought and, and effort was put into it than your average grinder. So. Yeah. And it's sort of mm -hmm. like. I respect my... that. Yeah, it's my biggest bra uh, problem with grinders is just the fact that you could do something like Admiral Bobo's Ghost to War, have a story, have character, dialogue, and make it fun to really compensate for the lack of gameplay. And it, it works as a mission. I mean, I would still wouldn't recommend, like, I still wouldn't rate it that highly because you could also just work with the parody in gameplay so you're not completely separating the two concepts out. But... It does. It is, I, I think, the greatest demonstration that you could do a lot better um, as someone just trying to meet some sort of functional bar, either a grinder or a DPS check or something else like that. Just make it more of a scenario. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that at the time, a lot of the flack it got was, was when it came out, there was kind of this. Uh, this simmering uh, feelings about grinders and grinders. General. Yeah. And I mean, even to this day, the top 50 is littered with accolade grinders. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. that in itself, and also Endeavor Grinders, those started popping up. And, yeah, those definitely, you know, it would be nice if Cryptic, you know, had the ability, like, basically active oversight on that type of thing. But it, it would take manpower to... Um, it would take really manpower kind of, that they just don't have. Yeah. Kale already has enough to do. <laughs> it's a small team, as we yeah. always must remind ourselves. So what I'm doing to set this next baseball stadium apart is I'm taking what I built originally and all these building blocks and changing them to a different material. That's good. Yeah. Of course, this will only get you so far since there's only a couple different types of materials. That we have what about the um, the shape of the... Uh, well, the, the shape yeah, of the outfield. I, I, put, I put some buildings... Um, on around the top of it, I used Vulcan buildings the first time. I'm going to use different buildings this time, mm -hmm. and, and in different configuration. I, what I'm um, thinking is, you could when could we you get do some something more, like um, the green monster for uh, Fenway. Not familiar with that one. Okay, um, yeah. So start looking up like major league um, uh, stadiums, but specifically Fenway. Because that has a really large wall that makes home run uh, hitting home runs. I think it's out to left field, um, a bit more difficult. So mm. you don't you have to. Keep okay, so yeah, there's there's kind of this big wall in left field, and then the stands come almost right down to the field in right field. That's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, play with the shape of the outfield and That's keep good that idea. type of thing in mind. And then for something like Wrigley, you start incorporating vegetation into the wall. There's some hanging pieces um, that would work out pretty well for that. Maybe the Ferengi in our stadium. <laughs> Since it's an extremely wet place, there'd be stuff growing everywhere. <laughs> they try to clear it off, but it just keeps coming back. Well, in fairness, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the building manager uh, skimped to try and save Latinum. <laughs> The plants are holding the wall together. <laughs> <laughs> There's structural moss. I do kind of wonder how Ferenkinar is not collapsed under corruption. Corruption is so essential for Frank. Just test, just test, just test. Riveting live That's, streaming here. That is what we do. Okay, I'm getting close. I'm starting to see shapes and things. That's good. It's, uh... When I'm doing this, I have to be very careful that I'm selecting the asset with the exact same shape as the previous one. Actually, that, one, that would be bad. One thing to say about f corruption on Ferenginar, if everyone does it constantly, does it cancel out? Maybe. Um, because it's kind of like the game. It's basically a game theory where corruption works best when only one side is doing it. So you get a lopsided advantage. But if every single party is applying corruption and to a maximum extent, basically think of like cigarette companies advertising. Yeah, it's ultimately and, moot. And there's also certain amounts of risk and corruption because, yeah, if, you, if you're uh, not doing your job, then there's a risk that your boss finds out and you don't get paid. So... Yeah. I'm just thinking if it's like it basically comes down to just imagine like it's the difference between corruption and just lobbying. But I mean, well, if, you, if you think about it as like, you know, X employee was embezzling from this company, but that company was already stealing that money anyway. 
et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And it's just, it's the corruption is so pervasive that it basically takes the form of just the standard economics. Of course, you know what? One thing we have to remember as far as, you know, current snow timeline is um, remember who's the Negus? Yeah. Wrong. Well, who's can... a bit more progressive than your average Frankie? A bit, but he also still has that. He still has a little bit of that edge to him. Because remember, um, in um, oh the um, the episode of the Negus where they they get um, Zach back to normal after his um, uh, experience with the orb. I, I actually just watched that one, and and it turns out that Rom has embezzled money from the Frankie Benevolent Association. Yeah. So I mean, he has that nice streak, but at the same time, he will he will dig in when. It, it sort of makes the most sense and does the least um, damage. Yeah. So he has more of a line than Quark. But he's still a Ferengi. But he's still a Ferengi. I mean, same thing with Nog, too. I mean, Nog definitely has, you know, his experience of the Great Material Continuum. He still is capable of doing those hard deals. And let's see. I'm just working with boxes right now. All right, that cat. Oh, that wasn't AEI Judge Cat. That was my other cat. Big Fluffy. The assistant to AEI Judge Cat. He's locked in the room with me right now. Aw. <coughs> oh, he's not happy. <laughs> Because he's not, he's locked in a room. He doesn't want to. He's not yeah, the, he he wants to go out, so I'm going to have to yeah, let him out for a second. <laughs> One thing that um, has been a slight problem is uh, when you copy and paste from one map to another, uh, it doesn't always preserve what assets are on top in the 2D map. Uh, it actually so right flips now, them. It, uh, yeah. it, uh, so if you actually duplicate it again, it'll be back to the way it was. Really? Yep. So yeah, it flips that's, the order. Yeah, that's possible. Each time it's duplicated. Okay. I'm and a that. back. Because otherwise, the um, the dirt at the very bottom of this map is going to cover everything on the 2D display. If you just need to build around that momentarily, you can use the Starfire Theta trick of, um, oh, just using Control x to um, cut something. You don't paste it. You basically just leave it transparent for a bit. And then to sort of, once you're done, you can just control C something else. So I will actually oftentimes have an entire map that is just a, a scratch pad map that I'll paste a, a bunch of objects into and then paste out of it, out of again, just so I can preserve the order. Now, does it work if you have done a little bit of work on this map? What do you mean? Um, well, I, I've been changing assets um, from one asset to another, and not not moving anything, but changing things. Uh, the order should still be the same. So if you copy paste it again, it'll uh, flip oh, everything. You know how? If you want to reverse the order, hit the duplicate map button. Because when it, it creates the new map, it flips it around. So if you want to duplicate a map and maintain the same order, you got to do it twice. But yeah, in this case, um, yeah, if you just duplicate map, then it should flip everything around. So that might be a little bit easier to work with. Dun, 
Da 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 da. And we've got <laughs> more viewers than usual tonight. So um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Holy well, crap! If I, if I start dancing, there's no way that's real. <laughs> well, I mean, it's basically just if if we start appearing in the um kind of the default list of still live streams. I mean, mm. <laughs> we can pop up a little bit there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just going to say the, um, oh, in case that actually is a real number. Yeah, we're just working the foundry right now, trying to build a discovery interior just for a little bit of a refresh. Mm -hmm. And um, me and uh, Drogan are just building separate projects right now. So I could probably just sit down. You know, I should probably send a few screenshots over. <laughs> I was gonna do that as soon as I got something to screenshot. There we go. I'll tell you what. I'll stop sharing to you guys, and if you guys want to show off uh, what you've got, I will put you up on the stream. Okay, I'll start sharing. I'll just reset map because I have no idea where my bridge officers have gone. There we go. You this take. is honestly the, the best way to get me to have a nice long foundry session <laughs> is, to do, is to do it during the show. Because otherwise it's like, mm, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to have a snack and, and watch more Leverage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mentioned something but on you've Twitter. you've already watched Leverage. <laughs> I, I am uh, a serial rewatcher of shows. Now be honest, I, have I you watched, the, watched it through more than once? Um, four or five times <laughs> at this point. <laughs> what? It's a great show. It, it, it's a happy show. I I okay. love Leverage. I thought it was a really good show. I have they're, not they're, watched it more than it, once. It's, it's comfort food, you know. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> me and Wooden Punch Man a couple months ago. Yeah, there, you um, know, there's there's certain shows that, are, that just make you feel good when you watch them. Eureka is another one. Um, Eureka is a good show. Uh, White Collar, another good one. Yeah, so um, the map here, uh, it's just the interior of all the stations, so Klingon Starbase. So starting off here, I did do this little trick where you put a grating right below a ceiling light, and so long as you're standing nice. under it, you get that effect. Now, if I stand off of it, just the way the lighting system works, you don't get that anymore, but just especially when you're spawning straight in, boom. Yeah, so it just it does sort of help emulate some of the stuff that's going on on the uh, official Cryptic map. But yeah, you got a little bit of a... Um, workout session <laughs> in progress so just trying to find identifiable klingon things to be you know making this uh, space feel a little bit more lived in or authentically lived in um and then you got the main trading floor here so a number of jokes alien physician physician's assistant <laughs> so first um sentient anna of doing miscellaneous things that I've been able to incorporate in my Foundry mission, since I still haven't done a 26th century mission yet. So duplicate map worked very well. Yay. Um, because if I actually duplicated all of these assets, it put me over the budget. So it, wouldn't, it wasn't going to let me do that. Well, that's, <laughs> that's why I tend to use a scratch map. But Yeah, so, so just on this map, it's just been a... Um, yeah, it's just been a little bit of a struggle to actually fill this, um, fill this, and not use tricks that I use in later builds. So doing things like just using the netting up top and doing the larger ceiling lights and making it like making use of the fact that it's kind of a dark map to hide detail, to use lighting to highlight certain things, like just putting small little ceiling lights there to make the most of the um, the wall piece here. Just to break it up a little bit. Conference room, fire. And then Klingon ship. Still have that offset fire. Yeah, it's still the offset fire, but either way, this one kind of, this one works. It's actually it's not so much offset fire, it's offset uh um flaming lamp thingies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brazier, my... not brazier. Brazier, brazier. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah because if you notice on the challenge pad those are still off and those the y value on the um braziers the assets themselves that's still a little off too so it's something that cryptic never f they fixed on the um they fixed on chronos but they didn't go back and actually fix the asset so everything in the foundry is a little bit bugged but 
it still it still works enough so I could actually use those assets. So yeah, this is what I've been calling on Twitter Kale's office. I could put Cogtash in there, but it's like uh, I don't want to write someone else's main character as a founder character. <laughs> and then a um a uh, brig. So using a little bit of the um, TOS assets again to just do something else than just using the uh, limited selection of stock Klingon assets we've got. And yeah, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of the full map. So it's nothing that's meant to be too spectacular just because it is the starting location and it is just sort of trying to present something that is familiar to then counterpoint, especially on the final build, which I'm, I've got some ideas for depending on how the story goes and it could be a little out there, but in a good way. Now, is this entirely custom or is this built on a uh, pre-existing map? It's entirely custom. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't use any of the... Um, well, I I don't do what would have been the easiest thing to do is just use one of the stock Klingon interiors and just call it Ginalda. Or Ginalda. But yeah, that would, that would definitely be the easiest thing to do. That would be the easiest thing to do, but this allows you to have a little bit more control over how this space works out and how gameplay will flow because the whole idea is that you sort of go to the station commander's office visit someone in the brig and then immediately have to um deal with something back out here so you run back out here have a bit of a confrontation which then sets up sort of the main dynamics of the mission so basically you go up, then go down. And I like the sort of the ascension, then descension um, for just, uh, just a good feeling for how that goes, because it's a little bit more, um, you sort of walking up is a little bit more intimidating than walking down. You feel like uh, a little bit more of a rush, a little bit, you know, lack of a control or something like that. Or it's just the psychological impression for me just feels a little bit better doing that. And then I can also, on a custom map, fill this with, you know, more gags. Like the Klingon microbrewery. And, yeah, this is what I've been uh, posting a little bit more of. Uh, Judgment Cat. The little kitty. And that's a straight black cat, but it's just with the lighting, it um, kind of shows up almost like a uh, Siamese. Yeah, that's supposed to be a uh, Judge Cat in a day job type scenario. Basically, I kind of like maybe just Klingon version of the People's Court, but with a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so settling honor, but with that, we're trying to do it in a more, I don't know, just different way than just stabbing each other. Getting an arbitrator in without having to resort into, you know, official Klingon politics or something like that. But anyway, it's just, you know, cat joke. Need to fill a stall. <laughs> it, 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 like at first I was thinking about like doing an AI there that you could interact with but once I put the pedestal here it's like I could do a small animal <laughs> either an Epo or a um, or the kitty cat and cat in this scenario just felt funnier and then uh, the other I, I like I did uh, manage to figure out how to do um, put uh, cameo of zero in the mission so Zero of fortune buying uh, weaponry. Yeah, that's the map. Do another lap. But yeah, it's just on something like this, it's one of those maps where, uh, one of those builds where there's a lot to work with when it comes to these Klingon walls because they've got a lot of facets to them. But it's still that dynamic of Klingon culture where you have minimalist, but at the same time ritualist, which kind of goes against each other. So it's a bit of that self-contradiction, and we don't quite have, I think, the assets to really pull that off. So you really got to stretch and try to incorporate other things to try to bring those together. Well, I mean, so it, it, there's an honor in self-denial. Yeah. Which is where the minimalist comes in, and then honoring it in the past, which uh, is where the extravagance comes in. Yeah. But it's how you do that. And this is kind of the, the dichotomy is that you have in Next Generation, for example, the description of life in a Klingon ship. And then you have Worf, who is the most Klingon 
Klingon in the entire series. But he look at how much crap. Klingon. But look at how much crap he has in his quarters, and how authentic, how deeply all that is tied into Klingon culture. <laughs> so you have that ritual, and that ritual requires materials to do that ceremonial honoring because you need an icon. You need to show your dedication. And there, a lot of that's internal, but Worf demonstrates that it can be a lot of external stuff too. And that's where the Klingons in Discovery really play off of it because they really, I think, bring those together in a really, a really nice way where there is that ceremony, but at the same time, the minimalism baked into each other. So it's just to replicate that in Stowe for me is just like, I'd like to have a little bit more to play with. But you can do it if you mix things a lot. And also just try to build in to a minimalist space a lot of cultural traditions like bloodline, for example, or weaponry or statuary. Or if you wanted to use this for a different space, like a challenge floor, build something like that where it's an elaborate space, but designed to f host a very specific very um, ritualistic function. So yeah, I can probably stop sharing at this point. Because, yeah, you've done several laps by now. Okay. Also, candles. Candles works well with uh, Klingons. Plus, it also makes good lighting. Yes. Because I don't think they generate light, but they look like they do. So they do, they at least break up the space visually. Because you'll see that, you, you can see them in the dark, but yeah, let me just do a double check. Yeah. Um, yeah, these aren't a lighting source in 2.0, but they will show up in the dark quite well. So I'm kind of taking, trying a different direction with the uh, arches. Because I, I wasn't quite getting the right vibe out of the Klingon arches. And it occurred to me that a, the, um, what is it? The, uh, those one star-based walls that we have, that have the, Can't recall which number they are, but they have the guy. They've uh, got these. Uh... Wall generic O three. Yeah. Or oh, those generic ones, the arch, or the ones with the arches. Yeah. Yeah. I might bring the ceiling down just a little bit more, but no, that looks real good. It's, it still kind of has some of that curve, but at the same time, it's adding the the sort of the the visual flair, and at the same time, blending in with the colors of the game. So yeah, yeah that looks pretty good. I think it gets me closer than the Klingon arches were. Let's see. I'm just going to check real quick. I'm at in total assets right now, 435. And that's by and large detail because I don't have many NPCs or building objects. Yeah, I can probably call that done. Say so we'll still need to do some transition stuff. And put some safety devices to make sure that the player doesn't go to weird places. Too early. Only when you want them to. Yes. Uh. 
So, Dorgan, how is uh, your park coming? I will be showing you that in just a moment. Do, 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 do. Uh, one quick thing that might be also, if we're showing up on the Twitch feed for STO, what might be bringing people in is the fact that we also say that the Foundry lay- Roundtable Mission Live Play. We didn't update that one uh, <laughs> for a live build. <laughs> um, I believe we're also being, what, what is it they call it, hosted by uh, Legion of Myth. Oh, okay. Well, they're doing their uh, show right now. Well, for all of you that came and haven't left, uh, welcome. Boom. Yeah, we had the angled uh, cave wall bits. Yeah, I was thinking about trying to put him up in the corner to kind of get the arch. I'm on the fence. Yeah, so you come up like about one. I'm going to start sharing screen again because I also do have another map that I've built but haven't shown off on the show yet. Okay, you're live. Okay, so I'm just loading up a map. So we did the Lethian Citadel, um, I believe it was our last regular show. And I'm going to show the exterior. <laughs> So this one, I've been, uh, I know I'm really close to the asset limit, but I thought I've been really close to the asset limit for a while because there's a lot on this map. So what I had to do, I wanted to build a work camp, a ceremonial uh, pavilion, and um, a sort of a settlement all in the same map. And still at the same time have the large visuals for the Citadel in the background. So that was tricky to integrate all together, and I'm using uh, Meadow Clearing. But I think it's come together pretty well. And that's, oh, it, yeah, it's old dialogue. But yeah, this is the, um, the start of the, when you go outside. So that's the Citadel. You've got parts of it over there, and over there. And these are all basically workhouses and machine shops for the local population that are directly associated with the Citadel. So there's a little bit of visual imagery of incorporating those into the structure, which was a happy accident, but I, I think it's worked out pretty well. It's actually sort of like blend, trying to blend the buildings inside by sort of interpenetrating them with other detailed items. Because otherwise it's just flat concrete and that didn't look too good. So um, yeah, so this is the sort of the work area pavilion over there, but the what kind of took the most assets is getting this part feeling right. And it's sort of based on a little bit of like Neil Blomkamp um, bits, a little bit of District 9, but more so some of the Halo um, stuff he did uh, for Halo 3. So it's like like a settlement, but it's a lot of concrete, small concrete walls sort of built at angles with each other. So basically before the shooting happens... <laughs> Um, not to say that that's necessarily going to happen, but yeah, I mean, just sort of like, I, I kind of like that feel for a, um, alien settlement. I haven't really done something like that before. It's so another set of market stalls, but in very kind of different styles before. So kind of playing off, like I, I built the Janalda station map to kind of play off this one a little bit, specifically this area, kind of build a sense of commonality, but yeah. Uh, but at the same time, still do alien stuff in try to do it like try to get a sense of these guys eking something out but what they've got is still something that they can be proud of because this used to be their home world ruined building but at the same time everywhere you look you still have the citadel as the omnipresent thing you know computer eating area but yeah this build it took shape relatively quickly once I kind of went through a few false starts with it. Um, but it's going to be an open exploration ground map. So 
the challenge was also to make sure that everywhere the player can go, it looks okay. <laughs> so even on the other side of the wall here, we've got some major detail bits. So, um, yeah, so this was, yeah, this was, this was a relatively fun build. Um, kind of a little tough when it gets to the work areas because it's when you're working with those colony buildings, you can't see them. So it, it's a lot of trial and error, especially like trying to combine that with the sense of austerity here as well. But just being like, you think there should be a little bit more, but there isn't, which is sort of underpinning how not dead this part of the lifestyle is, but it's inauthentic. So this part is more just, you know, it's just you're going to work. And there's not a whole lot here. So you've got, and I tried to bring this design out with these um, sort of pavilion areas where you think there should be a little bit more here, but I purposely left these really blank that you're basically, these are here for show. Like the Lethians are sort of building this stuff. It's to give the impression of, civility but without anything being there so i purposely the specific thing i didn't do here benches and npcs just cut those all out and then where you get a little bit more of the detail is just stuff it's just all tied to manufacturing and output you get a little bit of floor detail but still really regimented really barren and it's not until you get to the camp that you actually have a lot more of the um, detail popping up there so just, yeah, just providing visual contrast and at the same time trying to get that so it features into how this species and the world is set up. And then here it's ultimately where, di <laughs> where diplomacy is going to happen. Of course, it being Star Trek Online, you can bet how likely it is that diplomacy is going to take. And some miscellaneous stuff, some this stuff to dress up Meadow Hills. So a bit of alien terrain, a bit of a uh, transporter pad for everyone but you to arrive in, because we just walked. And then <laughs> I had the space, so I built a little bit of the garden area. So adding trees, fungi, and other stuff. A bit of luxury over here, but of course tied to the pavilion and effectively denied from the populace. So kind of a, a kind of a sort of a bittersweet thing. So you're looking out on everything, but at the same time, you're separated from it. So again, using the terrain to sort of build up a visual um, imagery. So yeah, next opening in uh, Exploration Ground Map. Cool. Optional, dial optional di dialogue, and I hope optional objectives too. I've got something set up with PIM from AEI. Which would be interesting because the character cannot have played his missions. So he's basically just alien drifter. So basically more authentic to his character. And I don't have to, you know, write around different scenarios there. It's a lot more straightforward. Medical area. But yeah, this type of build was pretty fun. I mean, especially to integrate too, especially when you're over here. Because you've got free license to be haphazard. And to sort of play off the terrain, but also build stuff on top of it. Also, I couldn't help but using my one of my favorite pieces, which is these curved archways to do a little bit of decor. Yeah, you can have a lot of fun with those. Then, even putting a little bit of detail back here with just uh, sunken buildings from old civilization. Same time, still putting stuff in the Citadel right front and center. It's kind of cool with the colony connectors and the uh, smokestacks. Yeah. Probably could have put another smokestack there. I, I kind of liked it as a two-piece as you're sort of looking at a distance, but yeah, of course, I think I could put one more in there because otherwise it looks a little bit off of that one. You got three over there and... Yeah, I, yeah dang it, I still like two from this view, but yeah. Oh, sad Bim. Also, um, what? Oh, the Moors rocks here, or the Highland rocks? 
those did work really well in this map. So if Drogon wants to put a little bit more to the terrain, oh, it doesn't work as a distance because this is the largest one we've got. Well, here, I'll, I'll show you what I've been doing. If you're ready. Yeah, all done. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. So I've copied and pasted the basic framework of what I had into a new map. This is the um, the Oasis clearing. So you'll be able to see palm trees and some mountains in the background. Um, I haven't put any uh, buildings up around the top deck there, but I will. Um, currently, I've got the Bajoran sunset backdrop. I don't yeah, know if that I'll works keep out. that or not, but it's nice looking. Um, first thing you'll notice is uh, the home plate is facing the right direction. <laughs> um, okay, I've changed the materials from 01 to 02, so it'll be different from the Vulcan one. Um, I've, all, I've, I've started to do some things inspired by Fenway, like you showed me. I've angled the stands on the outfield lines here in a little bit mm -hmm. and then the stands in right field will come close down to the field the same on the same level as these other ones on the sides so you can see out here in the outfield these are much lower than on this other side and this other side i'll probably build up that wall more yeah but i like if especially if you keep the backdrop here I'm just keeping this section low because it does really show that off Mm -hmm. I get some really nice lighting effects. And probably a lot more shadowing, too, if you build the um, left field side up. But yeah, that should be a really good... Um, yeah, that should be a really good one. Yeah. I'm kind of liking it so far. And then I'll put some buildings around the top of a different style. And I need a wall right here. And I uh, might as well just keep the bullpen the same. But there we are. Just a few more little things, and this thing will be ready. So we'll have two baseball stadiums instead of just one. And then I think I'll, I'll go on to the Ferenginar one, which will be basically plants and rain. Yeah, and the swampy, there's some, the swampy base map should make that pretty good. Yeah. Um, and I liked actually the, um, oh, the, uh, Kronos, um, backdrop for that one. So you get a little bit of, it's not like solid ground cover, but it does really match up well with the, um, exterior shots of Franginar used in, uh, Deep Space Nine. So raining at night, you still get enough light to see everything. And it still looks overcast enough that if you put rain on there, it doesn't look um, doesn't look off. And of course, on the horizon too, you also get a little bit of a building line, which um, works out pretty well too. Yeah, I thought maybe I'd try and build up Franginar a little bit more so it's like a city. Um, if, the vault, if, if I can. Oh, use the vault. So use those. Mm -hmm. That is what I found worked wonderfully well for Ferenginar. Because uh, there, I... There's like a large Klingon building that kind of has a skyscraper look to it, too. Especially if you can find a backdrop that uh, throws some fog on the map. So that it makes the uh, distant objects hard to see. Mm. So, Dragoon, how are you doing on your map? So, since we're... This is currently what I've got. And let me... Let me share so you guys can actually see. Yeah, the cave, the Ooh, cave walls... Yeah. I mean, you get the right angle in there. 
They're they're acting a little weird what? with the. Uh... Yeah, it's when you have a little what, what, bit more detail. Once detail. you put some consoles and lights and stuff with it, I think it'll look great. If you want something that blends in a little bit better, um, the Wall Generico Three maybe because it's also the same. It's roughly the same color too, as the uh, Cave Wall, and it's also. It's flat, but also has some complementary angles on the bottom. But at the, at the same time, it doesn't uh, work as well. I don't know if well it's, it's got enough curve to it. Oh, wait. Well, generic. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just a little bit behind you. I mean, I was just going to say use that in place of the... Um, the more ornate walls just to get the uh, cave walls blending in a little bit better on the, uh, on that angle. Cause I it's could, a consistent angle. What I could do. Bring this forward just a little bit. And then since we're using cave walls, why not use more cave walls and don't remember how big these things are. And so what if we build in a uh, false wall in front of the uh, Of the starbase wall. So it continues the pattern. Anyway, I didn't kind of figure that we would be able to com completely finish this in uh well, We got a good session. outline, though. Yeah. yeah. At the very least, kind of showing that uh, there's, even with the assets we have, there's really a lot you can mm -hmm. do if you're willing to be creative about it. Yes, indeed. Um, so how many how many assets are we at now, including the hallway and the room? Hang on. Let me finish previewing this. All right, so that might really require a little work with the positioning, but kind of set this wall up in front so that it kind of leans against and matches this pattern. And then that way you don't have the weird. Uh... Now, one, one thing that you would want somewhere is a, a place where you could have a door to the spore garden. Yeah, so coming from the hallway, it should be over here. One so of those. I, now, <clears throat> I couldn't make it a real door, unfortunately. <laughs> but I could, I could put a door there. Yeah. Then this would be the uh, graded trench that runs down the middle with the put some pipes underneath. So yeah, coming together, and then of course uh, our certainly is. our view of the warp core back there, and then some stairs. I'd have to build stairs. <laughs> it's definitely kind of starting to feel like it. Yeah, uh, it definitely has the shape. Yeah, and I think that's that's really playing well with it, because if you just kind of get the, the sort of the feeling of space the same then minor differences in detail will definitely count for a lot less. Yeah. Just enough to get them to buy it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're already just, you know, we're 
we're using some, especially some of the some really old assets in the foundry to create modern discovery stuff. So, yeah, we're up to two hundred and seventeen. So we're not doing too bad. No, not really too bad at all. So yeah, I Why think we'd have, have enough. Some... Have enough for another room or two. Yeah, uh, don't push your luck. Well, maybe not. Mess- maybe not two. Um, yeah, I'd say mess hall should be doable because we've got a lot of, um, well, basically the chairs and tables built into uh, single assets. So, yeah, it's really just the repetitive, it's, repeating hallways you, that are you would killing have us. To, yeah, you would have to sort of um, fudge it a little bit that um, these things might be on the same deck or. There's pull, a, pull my my easy turbo lift trick, which is set the turbo lift asset right in front of the player, have them do an interact on it, despawn that one, spawn another one behind them, and says, "Welcome to deck three. <laughs> oh, well, it would require me or, to make more hallway though. <laughs> That's the thing that kills us. Yes. You you and your absurdly detailed hallway. <laughs> well, it's it, it's what's necessary to build this out. It is. Could be, right. you know, maybe there's a mess hall that's specific, specifically down there for the use of engineers. Yeah. Like, Blood, like Bloodleaf says, engineering break room. That would make sense, especially with the fact that, you know, most of the ship is you know, dedicated to this space if it's using this war drive. So what do you guys see this? How do you, would you see this guy being used in a mission? Um... I mean, what you could do is like investigate a derelict crossfield class. You go into the spore, uh, you go into engineering, and you f- basically get techno babbled about what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you could also do like you know you're trying to retrofit some, this. Some some crazy admiral says, "I want to resurrect the spore drive experiment." Yeah, or just it, basically, it could be an easy place for expo- uh, exposition. Either you're doing stuff in there yourself, investigating something is taking place, or it's being used to set up something that will take place using that space. And then you can come back to it later for, you know, crazy admirals like, ah, I'm going to open a singularity and basically do evil with it. Those and then you, know, you have a thrilling... crazy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just to say that you could have a thrilling confrontation coming in here later, so duplicate the map and use it again. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if, if you were going to build this as a mission that um, for people who own Crossfield classes or Walker classes and you wanted to uh, them to be able to RP, yeah. that they're in this time frame, you know, this, this is their ship interior. You set a, sh- you set a scene on here um, that's set in their ship interior. Lots of us have done that. Um, you know, it, it's funny we talk about Crazy Admirals. What if you made a mission where you are the crazy admiral? Like, That'd be think, fun. You, think you're perfectly sane, <laughs> but then by the time uh, yeah. the mission ends, you find that you're doing something completely nuts. Well, yeah, I mean, actually, you could do it as sort of a parallel to Cisco building the Bajoran sail vessel. Like, you're trying to retrofit a crossfield class as a hobby, and various people at various stages try to talk you out of it. Like, I'm not sure about this. Or it's like, Oh, come on. We we've done our double checking. And then of course you put yourself in the mirror universe. Or, or it turns out you were, you were being possessed by the spores because there was a tardigrade that needed to go back to his natural habitat. <laughs> uh, you, you could do only that. If, and, only and, if and Duncan can build a tardigrade. Influencing you. Uh, you can sort of fudge a tardigrade with one of the undine props. Um, but no, no, this would actually be a good t- opportunity for a dormant tardigrade. So this would be sort of building a little bit of a slight spiral with oh, some smaller spherical rock assets. Or you could do tribbles in a pinch. Um, or the, what are they, the Horda eggs? That's a little too smooth. I would do tribbles instead, where you basically try to get it so it looks like a cur- like you just do a little bit of a spiral that sort of curls in. And... That would be a dormant tardigrade. So it would take a, it would definitely be fine detail work, and you probably also want to have it. The major spiral would be um, on a hor- uh, horizontal plane, but a little bit of verticality in there too. Yeah, I can see that. It, yeah, so 
that was sort of my my thought of how to do it, but it would be easiest if you know Cryptic could just work a tardigrade in, or a, a baby tardigrade for a pet and then have that as an NPC in a mission, <laughs> and then also do a big tardigrade and also do a variant that's in a Starfleet uniform. That would just make my life so much easier. Well, you know, I I, I think it's fairly guaranteed that we are going to get some more discovery content. Just maybe, be, maybe even soon. I don't know. Just we'll see. To, we need tardigrades. Cryptic, we need tardigrades, and we need them in the foundry. I could do a tardigrade season. <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, once you get like a baby tardigrade, you could just do a series of foundry missions about that tardigrade getting into stuff and it just resulting in various calamities. So like an adventurous baby movie. I mean, it's pretty default stuff. You just do it with a target that can spore jump and just doesn't do it with any sensibility so it's like you're at a diplomatic conference baby tardigrade gets loose and you find yourself shooting at romulans by the end of it because it's so, not, no, see, I'm, I'm i'm thinking of you know going in an entirely different direction where it's like independence day but the invading aliens are tardigrades oh but they were not <laughs> bad guys i mean says you uh, the evil tardigrade empire is from the mirror universe yeah, and I'm sure go. Sutherland already has dipped on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we should probably wrap yep, things we, up. We are, we are <laughs> at our time limit, so we can wrap things up here. Dragoon, put up our contact info. Okay. We can be reached by email at foundryroundtable at live.com. We are also on Twitter at foundryroundtab. Drogon can be reached at drogon1701. 1701, excuse me. Um, Dunk can be reached at gorgonups underscore SSF. Mark can be reached at MAR Hawkman. And I, of course, can be reached at Green Dragoon. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And we will say good night. Good night. Good night.